All right, so we just spent a little time exploring the CD. I, I think what I want to do now is just is get everybody on the same page with um, get everybody on the same page with logistics. So um, here's my calendar. I uh, I leave I leave this Friday. Um, so what I what I want to have happen is um, I want Greg Guccio to come in and cover some more of these practice pra, NABCEP practice exams with you. I don't want us to get to the end of the course and be, oh gosh, we, we forgot some. So I'm going to um, email Greg right now. Greg Guccio, next Tuesday. Um, hopefully he's available this time. from 10.30 to noon uh, a week from today. I would like uh, you to cover the NAB SEP uh, practice exam and update uh, the class on your own projects you're doing this spring. Thanks. Brad. So Gushin's got a couple projects, opportunities for hands-on. Um, he's taken the NABSAP exam. I haven't. There might be some other funny little thing in there that will tell you that I just don't know. So that that's that's Gushio. Somebody asked about uh, Lomason. Yes. Right? Let me um, So that's, that's Brian Kearns now. Uh, work schedule yet for the Lonesome P style. I have a couple of NRGY 243 students who are interested in participating. There's that one. And then let's go down. Um, I think somewhere down here is Orion. Orion, Orion, Orion. I apologize, but I'm too busy being a rock star giving talks. <laughs> uh, Co presenter Adrian, see, attached flyer. In the, on the afternoon, uh, and we'll be attending the morning session. Um, maybe it would be worth having. Come on. Uh, maybe it would be worth having students, instructors attend the conference. Just a thought. Either way, I will not be able. I think that's okay. If you guys, if you guys want to go to this thing. I'm not going to stop you. Let's see, let's see where Orion's talk is. Fire pumps, uh, combination, solar PV structural and electrical codes. There it is. Um, oh, that one's master electrician Mitch Hegman. Okay, fine. Solar PV field inspections. There we go. Afternoon. Uh, Orion Thornton and Master Electrician Ms. Hegman half day specifically intended for inspectors, electricians, solar PV installers, and others. Actual inspections. Perfect. Okay. So that's that's that. I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to Orion right now. And I think, are you guys? Penny Jakes doesn't need to know that.
but I will CC the class. 2016 emails. Where's everybody? All oh, copy. We'll get Tim Chester on there too. And so we're collaborating with the with the Blackfeet, and John Pickens is their instructor. So I'm just going to CC him if they want to go up to the conference. And in fact, if you guys want to go to the conference too and and check out Orion's talk, I'm fine with that too. I um, might want to just. And I, I think we can cover travel uh, with with my grant. So even if you wanted to, you know, drive up on on Tuesday go to the talk, check out the trailer that day, spend the night, get ready, and then knock it out on Wednesday. I'm fine with that, too. I'm just, um, I can I can help with the logistics. I'm just not going to go myself. Um, Good for everybody. So, just, yeah, got that out of the way. Okay, cool. So, um, Guccio. So we got you know th three different projects at least that are, will be you know happening. Guccio's build, Lomason. I also just got some word back from uh, somebody who's interested in doing the West Campus uh, as, as well. So when that starts to heat up, I'll let you know. But then, yeah, this this trailer and. Um, if I've shown it to you yet, let me just see if I can see if I can grab it here. It's looking pretty cool. Oh, is this the traveling PV trainer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, little uh. Little, little patio there, you can hang out after you've built your array. And I, I think what they're going to do is so all of the, um, you know, the electronics in, is going to be in here, and even a little, a little classroom as well. And the idea, it's um, you know, accessible just by a, by a ladder, it's, you know, high enough that um, I think you can do your tie-offs, you know, for, with the safety. Fall protection. Not too fancy, but just just right. Yeah. First of its kind in Montana. <laughs> yeah. I thought he had. He might have had another. Um, no, I thought he had a picture, but anyway. That's that. Okay, what else do we need to dig into here? Um, I guess we can get back to this other other exam a little bit too. Let's do that. Um, did the IV curve show you that? Uh, charge controllers. The main function of a charge controller is to. Charge the batteries. Well, okay. 
Um, disconnect loads. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maximum PowerPoint track. Prevent overcharging of the battery by the PV modules. Yeah, so the PowerPoint tracker is, is just sending as much electricity as possible to the charge controller. Um, your safety switch is what's going to, your switches are going to do the loads, not the, not the controller. Uh, and it's in the, the loads are sort of downstream and the charge controller is upstream from the batteries. So, I mean, while choice one is, is correct, it's not as correct as, as the final choice. Blank is the starting and operation of a PV system for the first time. Troubleshooting. Commissioning. Happens to be the answer. Inspection. Certification. Um, I guess the question in my mind is whether um, certification or commissioning happens first. So commissioning is getting the thing up and running. Troubleshooting would be if it was if it was uh, broken. Yeah, commissioning is the correct answer. I'm just trying to I'm trying to determine though what what certification would be though if that if that's even relevant. I've certified the system. Yeah. Let's just let's just look up and see if there's a technical definition of certification. I don't I don't know of one. Yeah. Certification is usually what a person gets, not what a system gets. Yeah. Okay. And on this by the same token, decommissioning is when you um, take the thing down, use it for the last time, basically. How about this one? A blank cost is the total cost of all the expenses incurred over the life of an electricity generating system. That's a good one. Let me jump in mind. Life cycle cost appears to be right. Maintenance cost. Annualized cost. Incentive cost. Okay, so an, an incentive would actually be money given up front, so kind of a, at the beginning. Um, annualized cost. Well, that would be um, if you had like a loan on the system and you're sort of paying it back annually. Maintenance cost, that's going to be a one-time thing. So yeah, in this case, um, life cycle cost, uh, total cost of all the expenses incurred. So yeah, that would just be start to finish, what it costs you to put it in, what did it cost you to maintain it, um, service it, disconnect it, et cetera, until the, until the thing is, is done. And it, at the end of the life cycle, you're going to have a certain, you know, dollars per kilowatt hour that you that you got out of the thing. Okay. Uh, total cost. Let's try this one, number ten. Improper integration. So this is this means if you've got your PV system miswired with your uh, conventional system or your wind turbine or whatever else you have, improper um, poor performance, component damage, electrical shock, all the above. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
like for example, your you'll put your diodes in properly, and you yeah, that can either shock you or damage the system or cause it to pour. All they about? A blank is a device that transfers energy from one circuit to another through magnetic coupling. You guys probably know this from all these cores. Converter, coupler, transformer, inverter. Yeah, so in the, in the transformer, we covered this in 101. You've got um, two separate coils. And it, it's, it's pretty wild the way the thing works. I mean, you, you kind of look at it and take it for granted. Usually there's a few kicking around here in the, in the, in the classroom. But um, the... Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with the electrical type. Yeah, so. Yeah, so in, in this case, um, obviously there's, there's current flowing through both electrical circuits, but the. Um, it's just the magnetic field itself that conveys the the energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it, they weren't connected though. Well, like they're not the connected. Power. Yeah. So the question is, are they connected? Up? Well, they're not. This this um, this wire is insulated. It's not actually electrically touching this core, and, it, and it's um it's a chunk of iron. Um, would it work without the iron there? Yeah. It doesn't work as well because the iron is more permeable to the magnetic field. You can think of the iron as more of a um, uh, magnetic um, box, container, just just like, um, oh, um, what's a good analogy? Um, It's, it's tough. It's tough to make a, an analogy here. Um, um, you you could think of this as like a, a garden hose versus a drinking straw. I mean, you would want to have a garden hose for water flow rather than a drinking straw because it just it's just there's less fluid resistance in the case of the of the chunk of iron versus empty space. There's less magnetic resistance inside the iron, so it's just going to be more efficient. So are they touching? Yeah, yes and no. Uh, this is just the, the um, core there that's allowing a greater number of magnetic field lines to be between the two coils. So there's, there, there are no electrons whatsoever um, passing between this wire and this one. It's just that when, once you get that um, current flowing, Magnetic energy flows and is then taken up by the uh, by the other one. It'll go, it'll go both ways, and it just depends on which direction. Unless you've got a diode in there, it just depends on wh where the highest voltage is. In general, the you know the the power plant is over here somewhere with a big high voltage, and you're just sitting over the other side with your your loads. You know your refrigerator, your light bulbs, no voltage, just just resistors ready to take it. And so the current will flow in that direction through this device. But it'll, it'll flow both, both ways, depending on where the highest voltage is. Pretty so cool. I have a couple of questions about the magnetic field. Can you yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, in magnetic fields, they talk about magnetic flux lines. Yep. So is there actually distinct lines, of, or is that just like shorthand for the field in its entirety? Yeah, that's a good question. So the question is whether there are, are in fact, field lines, and the um, yes and no. I mean, it's the same. It's the same as whether or not there are um, topological lines on a mountain. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you could you could walk along at a given um, elevation on a mountain. You know, say I'm I'm right at thirty seven 
uh, hundred feet. There's there's no you know physical line obviously drawn yeah. on on the um, on the mountainside, but but where you are, you're at a constant elevation, and you know more or less at a constant gravitational potential. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with the magnetic field lines. Um, the closer you get to the to the middle, the stronger they are. Is, is more or less how it, in the same way that if you walk down from 37 uh, 100 feet to 3200 there would be more gravity yeah so um, and I guess if you wanted to really get down in the weeds you might say well gosh you know isn't isn't everything quantized like is, isn't magnetism quantized well in that case well perhaps you could have you could just you could jump in magnetic strength in, in little tiny quanta, but mm -hmm. normally we just treat the magnetic field as a continuous variable rather than a discrete one. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another question. Yeah. I don't know if this would be real the whole slide. Okay. Okay, so um, I was wondering like what the substance of magnetic fields are, if there's indeed a substance. Oh. The only thing I can find is that uh, most physicists refer to the field as Comprised of virtual photons, it's not actually photons. Oh, in yeah. The same sense of electromagnetic radiation. Do you know? Yeah. So that's a good question. So, is there any substance to a magnetic field? Here's the way I here's the way I typically um, think about that. And it might be right, it might be wrong, but this is how I, <laughs> this is how I typically um, um, think about it. So, in a in a um, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's, let, let's just this is let's just put a nucleus here, and let's draw, um, you know, electrons around that nucleus. So electrons themselves have this property called spin, mm -hmm. and they're either spin up or spin down, and that's and this is more or less why in our periodic table in that first shell you only have two electrons. It's only one up and one down are, are all they're going to fit. Now the way um, the way I understand it, um, that spin actually has a um, physical magnetic meaning. So, de so depending on what direction, you know, what, what actual physical direction is. The, the electron has mass, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. Depending on what direction that thing is, is pointing, um, it's going to have its own spin and thus its own magnetic field. So, uh, and we can get to the photon thing here in, in a second. Um, now, if you go out and let's just look at um, iron. So, Fe, 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 Fe. And then out, out in. Um, iron or other metals, you're going to have a whole bunch of electrons that are kind of out, um, kind of further away uh, from the nucleus. They're still going to have spin, and if you've ever, you know, magnetized iron before, you've probably noticed that, um, well, gosh, they can, um, you, you can magnetize it. It just means that you're going to have a predominance of the electrons sort of trapped in one state either an up or a down. The same thing happens in magnetic resonance imaging. Water is, is a polar molecule, so the electrons are hanging out a little bit closer to the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atoms. And so when you subject a body, you know, in, a, in, a, in fact just a human body, to a magnetic field, some fraction of those, excuse me, water molecules are going to affect get that magnetic spin. So now you've got a, a certain fraction of electrons aligned in the same direction, and that will give you your magnetic field. That's how you'll feel it. Now in terms of what it is, um, and whether there are, what would you call them, virtual photons, I guess? Yeah. The, the, way, um, the way I understand that, and this, this, is, this is true, because you can, you can go out and measure in a circle. I've got, the, I've got the circuits right in my office. Any time, and I don't, I don't think you're going to run into this in most, in most wiring 
applications. But let's just say you do have a, a circuit, and here's some conduit, and maybe it's made of copper. And you've got, you know, actual physical electrons traveling through the copper. Um, if they if they go around a bend, obviously they're going to emit some some magnetism. Mm -hmm. And what you see, and we actually see this a lot. It's, it's kind of coming up in the literature more on like the smart metering, because they're they're purposefully sending out um, electromagnetic waves. How is that happening? Well, it's just happening from electrons accelerating inside of circuits. I mean, that that is the coupling between an electron moving and uh, um, an electromagnetic wave. Depending on how quickly the electron is, is accelerating, because again, remember, um, acceleration, well, this, this can go right back to um, Newtonian physics. If this electron just kind of continued forever in a straight line, it wouldn't accelerate. But as soon as it takes this, this turn, you know, it's just like taking a hard turn in your, in your car. You accelerate and you get pushed to the, the mm -hmm. side of the door. Same thing happens. When that, when that electron accelerates, it, um, it does emit some electromagnetic radiation. It sure does. It's a photon. And, it, and typically, it's in some radio wave. Mm -hmm. Like right now, and I, I, I've actually done it in this, um, in this office with a couple different things. One's called a Stetzerizer. You know, it's, it's just, it's something like this. And what, it, what it's giving you are, um, it's giving you volts per second. It's telling you how, um, how quickly the, the voltage is changing around some corner when the um, electrons move through. So there, there are other power conditioning circuits that will um, re reduce that. It will, they're, um, they're just called harmonizers. So, yeah. So the, the, the um, it is a photon. It's, it's usually a long wave, kind of a radio wave, and that's why, um, you know, you turn your microwave on, your radio screws up in your kitchen, or even just standing next to my radio in my house, my own um, body will mess with it. You know, it's just interference. So they're there. They don't, they don't, Photons do not have mass. They don't require any matter to travel through them. But um, yeah, it'd be the same thing if, if um, getting back to that transformer, um, you'll be able to pick up some noise. There, there's, there's electromagnetic radiation coming off that thing. And that's where your inefficiency is coming from. You know, normally you treat the, the transformers as 100% efficient, but they're not. You know, those, those um, magnetic flux lines are leaking out, you know, just like water leaks out of your plumbing in your house. It, 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 it's never perfect. So. so the field itself is distinct from the photons. Right? It's the, essentially like the attractive or repulsive force of the electrons? Okay. Um, the magnetic field itself is comprised, well, the the, the the electrons with a given spin are creating that field. Uh, the, 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 the the path of the radiation, the photons coming out, are affected by it. So I don't want to say they're, they're one and the same, but they're interacting with each other in the same way that, um, well, matter interacts with gravity. Like there's a, there's a gravitational field all around us. We don't we don't see the lines, but if you you know you drop an apple, it's going to travel in a parabola, and, and effectively, yeah, there you, you see the lines. In the same way that the um, uh, well, the Earth's magnetic field will deflect ions coming in uh, because of the way it's the way it's shaped. So the particle and the field interact. Yeah. Got it. So it's yeah, the field is a force. The yep, the field is a force. It is a force field. Quantum, on the other. That's, one way of of it. That's right, and the photons are interacting with that force field. Yeah. Yep. 
even though they don't have mass. Yeah. <laughs> Settles it a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. All right. So once we got into spinning transformers and AC electricity in general, I was like, well, what is a magnetic field though? Yeah. So and now, I guess we're in that time. But it's all right. The there's like Guccio's going to wrap up the rest of this. Just tell him how far you got. And he'll, he'll cover the rest of the next one. Um. Yeah. So in physics, there's like three distinct forces, right? Gravity, electroweak force, and nuclear force. Sure. And now is magnetism just electroweak force, or they one and the same? Yeah, the um, magnetism is part of the electroweak. Yeah. The elect so I guess typically you think of three fundamental forces or sometimes four fundamental forces yeah. in physics and gravity is one. It's it's relatively weak. Electromagnetism or the electroweak force is the other one. It's the one that keeps the electrons close to the protons. Then I've always just heard it called the the strong force yeah. that holds the um, the nucleus itself together. It keeps the protons from flying apart. So it's kind of just, at, at it's, and you know, physicists are looking for a way to unify all of them. It just could be, it's all the same force. It just looks different at different scales. Yeah. It's just like, oh, if you get down further, yeah. yeah. To an extent, they adhere to the same principles. It's like the strength of the force is inversely proportional to the square of its distance mm -hmm. in every case. But um. Certainly not that simple, right? They would have been unified already. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, gravity's inversely proport uh, inverse by the square. The um, a lot of times the Coulomb force is substituted the electroweak, and that's also inverse square. I don't know that much about the strong though, in terms of what its uh, mathematical format looks like. Yeah, it may not. Or yeah. maybe it does on a scale that we have yet to be able to measure. Yeah. Yeah, well, sub sub subatomic. Yeah, because otherwise, if if that uh, the strong force operated over larger distances, it would just kind of suck you know all the yeah, like the electrons <laughs> yeah. black holes everywhere. Yeah, everything would kind of get pulled pulled together. Okay, well, um, we got to, I guess, the 11th question, and this was on the NABSEP practice exam. So hopefully, Guccio can be here next week and um, go through a few more of them. He's, he's got um, a lot more experience directly in this field than I do, so. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy your trip. I will, I, I hope so. Are you going there for a little kitty's wavering pause? Yeah. <laughs>